And welcome back to the Cover 3 Podcast here on CBS Sports. You see those sirens in your feed. You know exactly what that means. Florida parted ways with Dan Mullen on November 21st. And we sit here on November 28th, and the Gators have a new head coach. And it's a head coach that we've been talking about a lot because he's been a popular candidate, not just across the country, but really even in the SEC for multiple years. Multiple reports as we sit here with Bud Elliott, Chip Patterson with you. Uh, look, It's looking like Billy Napier is going to be the next head coach of the Gators. I, I think, number one, I give Florida credit for a swift search. Number two, uh, I give Florida credit for being able to – Maybe not win, because we discussed this on the Instant Reaction pod about no one actually knows about how this is going to go, and anybody who says otherwise is just making things up or way overconfident. Um, but we have given Billy Napier a lot of check marks, feel like he is ready for this opportunity to take over a major program, and now he's got uh, a Florida roster that might need some help on the recruiting trail, something that I'm sure we'll talk about. Billy Napier has uh, plenty of experience doing and, uh, and now for other schools that might have wanted Billy Napier, Virginia Tech, for example, he is off the market. So a lot to get to, bud. What really uh, stood out as things moved quickly from, hey, yeah, uh, Napier's the front runner to now it's looking like this thing could even happen uh, officially, officially uh, in the next hour or so even. Sure. Uh, Chip, I, I mean, I feel like we were just talking about this last night. So uh, we, we oftentimes see that schools will hire uh, somewhat of the opposite of of what they just fired, right? If you have an offensive guy, if offense was the problem, you know, okay, like let's, let's go get defense. And uh, I think the example here with Den Mullen is Den Mullen's recruiting was a problem. Uh, l- lack of ability to run a recruiting organization of the size of Florida uh, to produce satisfactory results. Now, Florida had you know a number of top 10 and top 15 classes, but Florida knows what Florida looks like when it is really, really humming recruiting class-wise. Will Muschamp had one. Urban had several. Uh, Ron Zook also had a couple that set up Florida to win a national title. When Spurrier was really into it, we really didn't have recruiting rankings in the same way back then, but I'm pretty sure those classes with like Javon Kirst and those guys would have likely... Yes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Javon Kirst would have been a five-star type guy. Uh, And so in Billy Napier... Florida is getting somebody with a reputation of being a really good recruiter, uh, first and foremost. He's worked under Nick Saban, I believe, twice uh, in 2011 as an analyst, and then he came back in 2013 and spent a couple of years on that staff as well, uh, has worked in a Saban recruiting organization for Jim McElwain, obviously who Florida fans probably won't like uh, hearing that considering you know, how McElwain's recruiting was at UF, although I will note that Mullen won a lot of games with McIlwain's players, so some of his evaluations turned out to be fairly good uh, in spite of the uh, maybe the lack of star power in those classes. But but he has a reputation as a tireless recruiter, uh, somebody who's going to emphasize recruiting on his staff uh, quite a bit, and yet he's also he's, he's won a good number of games there at Louisiana. Four years, four Sunbelt West Division titles, one Sunbelt Championship, a chance to go for uh, a second. The By the way, as we are sitting here, you know, three and a half minutes into the podcast, Florida just made it official. So, like, that's oh. how quickly it went. It went from us texting uh, around brunch being like, okay, guys, so let's come up with the game plan. Is it going to happen tonight? Is it going to happen tomorrow? And then boom, boom, boom. Uh, the Gators have their man in Billy Napier. I think that, the idea that he was able to take uh, Louisiana very quickly, make it the the class of the Sun Belt, and be able to maintain a relationship with a lot of the players on that roster such that they were all wanted to come back. I mean, if you were looking for the coach-player relationship, even within the current roster, not just on the recruiting trail, that's got to be one thing that you look at and, and you walk away thinking, um, okay, if all those guys are going to take their super senior year, 15 of them, I believe, it was one of the highest totals in the country. Remember the returning production at Louisiana going into the season was one of the highest in the country. You know That kind of retention rate suggests that uh, those players like playing for Billy Napier, and that's something that given the, the kind of ups and downs and the way that the Florida season just – collapsed in the last two years under Dan Mullen. I think that you are excited by that. I do think that there is um, a difference between being very promising and also it being a surefire success because Billy Napier could could follow um, 
a, a former Nick Saban assistant higher path that leads to like a Kirby Smart. We could see Florida competing for SEC championships. I think I shot from the hip with if Florida hires Billy Napier, the Gators will be playing for an SEC championship in five years. As we sit here in its official bud, I got to say it felt felt like I might have gotten over my skis with that one, but I, I'll stick by it, at least as a prediction, five years uh, at least competing for SEC championships, or this could go the way of a Jim McElwain. This could go the way of uh, numerous other Nick Saban assists, Jeremy Pruitt, where you you step up to that big time. Derek and, Dooley. Uh, Derek Dooley, there's another one right there. So there's a lot of different ways this can go. I will say that my sense is that Billy Napier is more likely to be Kirby-ish than it is to be Derek Dooley, Jim McElwain. I, I think I would agree with that. Um, obviously, Kirby spent a ton of time with Saban, and he was inheriting a Georgia program that was ready to be told what they needed to do from a resources perspective, right? You don't fire Mark Richt if you're not going to go and really, really spend the money to bring in those top recruits and have somebody to organize all that money into analysts and facilities and, and research and all that good stuff, right, that really helps you on the fringes of recruiting. Uh, Billy Napier has been very patient in this process. Uh, I believe he did turn down Auburn uh, last year when Auburn had all the stuff with like, hey, you should keep this guy and that guy. And they're like, eh, I don't know if you really want to keep a coordinator who led a coup to, to get the, the current coach fired or the the guy you just fi- you know fired. Uh, fired. And I, I think he also uh, wasn't super interested in South Carolina, correct? If I, if I recall my facts from from last year. And he's been pretty patient in this in this process. And it looks like he came out a real winner here. Uh, if Florida will come out a winner, there's going to be a couple of factors, right? Uh, number one, why did LSU not want Billy Napier? Is it as simple as big money guys don't want to hire the Louisiana coach at LSU? Much the same as I, I bet you'd be very difficult to get you know, bull gators bought in on hiring the FIU coach mm-hmm. if FIU was, was cooking. If it's that, then LSU probably, may, well, could have made a mistake here. If it's more than that, if LSU has reason not to show any interest in Billy Napier, other than Scott Woodward having a reputation for landing big fish and Napier not qualifying as a big fish, then okay, maybe Florida uh, it, it did not make the right move. We don't know. Napier has, has some things to really like. He also has some things that are you know, maybe a little bit concerning. Uh, they did lose to a you know bad Texas team this year but by three scores to open the year. They won by three points over FCS Nichols. Uh, they won by a single score over Georgia Southern, which was you know in, in the middle of firing its coach by two points at South Alabama. Uh, they crushed App State, much to their credit. Uh, they won by one point at Arkansas State. They won by four points hosting Georgia State. Um, they crushed Liberty, which is pretty impressive. And in this past weekend, they won by five over Louisiana Monroe, which I think they should get a pass for, given that they have the conference championship game on deck and the rematch with App State. There are a lot of close wins here. Like, if I'm trying to be fair and balanced here, I think he'll do a really good job recruiting at Florida. Uh, I think the coaching has been I think led, the counter, a lot of wins. Yeah, I think the counter isn't even, like, specifically what he's done. is that he just doesn't have a big sample size. Right. If, if someone from LSU comes to me and says, you know, it, like, was it maybe an ego thing? Yeah. Like at the in-state group of five school, or maybe was it an ego thing with hiring a group of five head coach anyway? That's fine. But if you actually got to the core of it and real decision makers, you know, Scott Woodward and his team, if they said, look, the guy's only spent four years as a head coach in college football. And we at LSU were looking for somebody that's going to, you know, fill out that experience just a little bit more. And if that's going to be the reasoning, I think I can rock with that. It sure. might be faulty reasoning, might not play out as well as you know if you had decided to jump in on this, but Florida is taking a risk on a hot stock that does not have a super proven track record. No, it's not super proven, super long track record, though in that short track record, there's nothing but success. There, there's no doubt about it. Like he he has won a whole lot of ball games, and you could say it's the Sun Belt. That's fair. Uh, but he did recruit a lot of the players, especially on on, on these last uh especially on, on this year's team. You mentioned they had a lot of a lot of uh, super seniors come back. That's fair. Uh, but I, I think everybody in the recruiting industry recognizes the, the, the way that he runs that recruiting operation there. And I think they will have more success recruiting guys than, than Dan Mullen. Uh, whether he can coach them up to the level they need to beat Georgia anytime soon, 
I guess we'll see. They have some nice pieces there in Gainesville. Anthony Richardson got to play a lot in the second half yesterday. That's probably the first call you make if you're Billy Napier to be like, hey, uh, by the way, guy with generational uh, physical tools, we'd like you to stick around uh, if if possible. I don't know what they're going to pay him. I assume they'll also give him a nice budget uh, to hire coordinators on both sides of the ball. We'll see who he can pluck off that, that saving tree and who he, he can rely on there. But it, it's a hire that makes sense. Um, I think there are very, very few slam dunk hires in college ball anymore. Uh, if you go back and look at the grades you gave hires in prior years, I know if I look at mine, terrible. Everybody has, has 100% grading accuracy in hindsight. But in, there are so many other factors that determine success or failure. Uh, I think the big thing here was that Florida determined that Mullen uh, was not going to have a path to success. They went ahead and made the move, like, like we talked about uh, last weekend. And... They got a guy now they think can come in there and, and recruit better up the talent level and then get some dubs. Yeah, I generally don't give bad uh, coaching grades just because I do this really strange thing called applying context. And context is often, well, they had to get out of that situation, which is what you just mentioned about Dan Mullen, to which case I would have said any new voice would have been an upgrade. Like any new voice, the fact that you like not making a move sometimes is the F and making a move to at least be able to move on, uh, try something else out, and keep the program moving forward is almost a, a way to get you straight to a to a C minus in my book. Um, so, LSU, as we mentioned, what with Napier off the board, it has brought out a lot of reports, pretty widespread. You know, all the usuals that uh, have have given a collective sense that from the jump, Napier wasn't really taken as a serious candidate. Ross Dellinger also has a fascinating piece uh, in Sports Illustrated that suggests that when Lincoln Riley came out with his very stern and very aggressive, you know, I will not be the next head coach at LSU, that that was a shock to some people in Baton Rouge. Uh, Bruce Feldman described it as one of those uh, like rumors that just like took off like a runaway train and everyone kept saying it and kept saying it to each other. No one really knows where it started, like a classic game of telephone, but there was never an offer. Lincoln Riley never accepted any offer, but there was at least a belief in and around Baton Rouge that Lincoln Riley was on the table. Lincoln Riley's off the table. Um, James Franklin's off the table. Mel off the table off for the table. off the table for LSU. For our LSU, yeah. The the Lincoln Riley to USC is is fascinating. Could be Matt Campbell to USC. I don't know. Maybe Lincoln Riley's the smoke screen there. I'm going to give uh, you all something. Okay. I trust Bruce Feldman on anybody on the air raid tree. I, uh, he wrote the book with Mike Leach. Yes. He was very tight with, with, with someone in those guys. He knows everybody on that tree. If anybody related to the air raid is in coaching news, I'm going with Feldman's word over basically anybody else's. So on, when he's on that coaching tree. So when he said the Lincoln Riley thing ain't happening to LSU, when it, all, all, all these other kind of guys that aren't really in the coaching, you know, scoop reporting game, we're like, oh, like Riley LSU. It's like until Bruce says something different here, I'm going to believe Bruce. I'm I I don't even need the air raid tree as a qualifier. I generally yeah, Bruce is great. I'm just saying specifically yeah. with, with that relationship right. there. Right. The able because he also said, um, but it was more speculation. He uh, tweeted that uh, he wouldn't be surprised if USC just went and took a crack at it. You know, yeah. and uh, and maybe so. What's next for LSU? James Franklin off the board. Mel Tucker off the board. Billy Napier off the board. Lincoln Riley off the board. Uh, what what ends up happening in Baton Rouge? Do you get Mark Stoops a call? Yeah, I, maybe Mark I would, Stoops can get a big raise out of this. I, I would hope State that you've at least started that conversation. And that's the like I also saw that as a piece of commentary. How are USC and LSU, the first two major jobs to open, going to be the last ones to be filled? But Monty Jones said it was like they uh, had the syllabus all semester and just looked down at it and was like, "Oh, semester, we got to get we got to get that paper in. It's November, it's November thirtieth. Oh crap! You know, it's it's not all that impressive if you ask me. Though I understand that they were at the limitation of needing for a lot of these seasons to end. I do understand that. But still, if unless LSU has somebody locked and loaded, like then uh, the fact that they are behind schedule right now is is not great. I would agree with that. Um, you know, the other thing is, does Woodward have another pitch he can throw? His fastball is really good. His game traditionally in the coaching search thing has been go get somebody proven and pay them a boatload of money to where they can't say no. If Oklahoma is willing to match whatever offer LSU made, right? If if there was an offer, 
what what amount can LSU actually offer that would get somebody like that to say yes, as opposed to staying at their own school? Now, there's a ton of benefits to the LSU job. Obviously, the, the recruiting in state is pretty much unparalleled. You can kind of do whatever you want there. You don't have any actual competition. Kind of play by your own rules. Uh, you know that that that's a huge, huge draw. The last three coaches there have all won national titles, but we don't really know how good is Woodward at going to get somebody who is less proven. How good is he at scouting out coaches who have not won conference titles or, or national titles yet? Everybody can go go now. Look, everybody can go identify a Jimbo Fisher or a Lincoln Riley. Getting them to say yes is much tougher. And to Woodward's credit, the LSU AD. In the past, he has been able to get guys to, to say yes to that. Chris Peterson to Washington, obviously uh, the women's basketball coach from Baylor, um, uh, Kim, Kim Mulkey, Mulkey, the you know very successful baseball coach hired, getting Jimbo to A and M the first time around. But if his talent certainly is persuasion, how is his evaluation of coaches? If mm. if, if his short list of big time proven guys ends up that he's striking out on, we'll see if he is. Mark Stoops, Lane Kiffin. What like let's say you I don't gave, think they would you do gave something. analysis. I'm I want to put you in the position. Because you know what that, that contract we're talking about 85, 95 million dollars, you know, somewhere around there. Uh the all of the advantages that you have described, and knowing all the chess pieces that have moved so far in the coaching carousel, what would your play be? Maybe make a run at Matt Campbell if he wants to recruit in that fashion. I, I really don't want confidence. Like, I don't think it's a good position. I think LSU is sitting here with the kind of job where they don't need to make a home run hire to be able to be really, really, really good. But I think that uh, there will be some segment of an, the LSU fan base that at this point are, will not be satisfied by whatever name is introduced at the press conference. Are the Panthers uh, losing today? Yeah. Oh, I would look at Matt Rule. For do you make sure. Do you make a call to Matt Rule and say, "Hey, yes. man, like I, I know you hate, I, I, not hate recruiting. I, I know you really love the NFL, and in the NFL, you, you actually have the ability." Joe Brady to too. I mean, that's like either one of them could end up being, uh, the, or the NFL in general could end up being the LSU move. Possible. Yeah, I I really don't know what they do. I I, I don't think that Scott Woodward's a guy that wants to go coordinator. Maybe NFL coordinator is different. Um, especially when it's Joe Brady national championship. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't, I don't, for example, uh, Jackson in the chat mentioning Marcus Freeman, the Notre Dame defensive coordinator, who is a rising star in the industry and, and has the belief around the industry that he is going to be a head coach and have that opportunity at some point. I, I don't know if, if LSU ends up, uh, taking it all the way to the point where you're hiring Notre Dame's defensive coordinator, but could be a good, a uh, good opportunity the way that Freeman has uh, developed defenses and what he could do on the recruiting trail. Do you make a call? To Brian Kelly and say, hey, man, you're doing a great job there at Notre Dame, but there are certain kids we can get in at LSU that you can't get in. You're not getting any younger. This is your probably your shot at the national title. I think Kelly's wrapping it up at Notre Dame. I do, too. But I, I think I think you need to make that call. Ah, oh, man. Kind of play on the guy's ego. He 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 won when he was uh, was it D2. It was yeah D2, right? Not not FCS. Grand Valley State. Yeah. You know, championship winning coach there before. He's gone to the national championship game and then I gotten stomped. mentioning Brian Kelly is showing respect for Brian Kelly as a head coach and where he stands in the pecking order because we're losing Absolutely. coaches that you're like, even in the college football playoff era, he has been one of the most successful coaches. You know, has Mel Tucker signed? Yes. Yes. Okay. Or at least, I mean, school release, Mel Tucker statement. You know, I want to thank the university president, this, that, or the other. So. I 96 million guaranteed for Tucker, by the way, is, is what I saw. And the interesting thing there, like if you're LSU, could you pay more than that? Probably. Is it prudent to pay more than 96 million guaranteed? Like it's very clear to me why LSU or why Michigan State would pay Mel Tucker 96 million. Because if, if you think you're you're a school like Michigan State, which is like not a not a top 15 level program, but kind of in that sort of 15 to 30 range. If you think you got a guy who may be an elite coach, you, you need to overpay just to take that gamble to, right. to lock him up. It makes sense. That's a risk you're willing to take. If you're LSU, if Tucker hadn't signed, it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to say, hey, let's go throw 
11 million dollars a year or something crazy like, like that and mel tucker guy, has the same billy years. napier issue yeah yeah he's got the same billy napier issue where we've got this like all these other former bosses that are going to sign off and say how awesome he is and how great he can be but there are only but so many seasons when we're looking for how how long have you actually been a head coach one more name i, I would i would go look at I have very little doubt Cristobal would win at LSU. I like it. That's I mean, that is that's the answer. Butt off. Yeah. How long is Saban really going to be at Bama? I absolutely get the uh, the concerns you would have last year in turning down the Auburn job that everybody else is running the Saban playbook in the SEC as far as recruiting goes, which is why it would make sense if he goes to Miami. Now, there's a lot of things about Miami that probably wouldn't make sense but there's not a lot of schools in the ACC r r running that deal. In the SEC, you have Saban for, I don't know, I'll, I'll have Bama fans all over me for this, but how many more years do you really think Nick Saban is either going to A, coach, or B, maintain that level? I right? think we're on a rolling two- to three-year, like you could always be right around the corner from the retirement announcement. Sure. I, I, I think that's I think that's fair. You can't feel confident at any point based on, you know, age and how long he's done it that he's going to be there for four more years. But at each point, I've kind of had this rolling like yeah, he could probably do two more. And every year that he finishes, it, it continues to extend, especially as I see, you know, him like he started this season having me think he could do three or four more. He is finishing this season having me think it'll be more like two or three on my rolling window. Yeah, if uh if I said the over under was two, I think we'd have some interesting debate about that. Maybe we should this offseason, right? If, if you can't, if you can't take push, you know, Sa Saban to LSU, the group chat wants. Boy, that would be hilarious. Ooh, that, yeah, that would be, uh, that would be wild. Um, Walking out the door, talking about self absorbed Alabama fans, and then uh, take Miss Terry back down to Baton Rouge. What one more for you here? Uh, by the way, I like Cristobal. When I was trying to like take the conversation, like who. Who are the the top ranked, you know, like best available? You're doing a fantasy draft, and, and there's those names that filter up to the top so that when it snakes back to you, you're like, oh, yeah, you know, like I, I would like this this wide receiver or, you know, this quarterback or whatever. And this this is the the Mario Cristobal case that I think you, you did a good job of presenting where if all these other names have been taken or they've locked up with their current schools, who's the next best available in, in the draft order? One more. Yep. Um, what else you consider Aranda? <sighs> too too close to the Orgeron thing, although like clearly I, I you know, did him and Orgeron get along? Obviously, I, I Ed made some comments on his way out about how like our defense is gonna be so much better, we're gonna run more four down stuff. And I know some people in the industry took that as a shot at Dave Aranda. Uh could could Woodward get over the idea that Aranda was on Orgeron's staff? He's done a nice job so far there at Baylor. I I think that Aranda is uh, what it is being reported that you know Baylor's doing everything it can to put together a new deal for Aranda, and Baylor's got money, by the way. Baylor, like, Baylor has yes, Baylor yeah, does yeah. not have recruiting location, <laughs> being that they're in Waco. No, and they don't have tradition, but they do no. have a lot of money, and they can make it. They can make life nice for its head coach. The head coach is looking for. Uh, Life to life to get a little bit nicer. So that's it's and, about competitiveness. It, it, yeah. It's the same thing as the Stoops argument, right? You can have a great life. Lexington is actually a really good place to live if, if you're an SEC head coach. Like it's a pretty cool town to to live in. It's it's not one of these just total podunk college towns. You know, Waco. I'm not going to say is as nice as Lexington, but you can have a whole lot of money there. The thing is, these coaches are competitive by nature. And they're not dummies. You can't win a national title at Baylor. You can't win a national title at Kentucky in football. Is Aranda so heady? Though, come at me. I don't care. I, I don't know. I think I think Aranda might be heady enough to really buy into the um the de development, you know, just like really get sure. off on the idea of like building and developing a program. Uh, and there might be a time in his head coaching career where he's driven by the national championship, but I don't know, spent maybe 45 minutes with him across a couple different settings. He's 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 always been one where I, I could see him enjoying the experience of isolation in Waco where they can kind of uh, build up a unique program. And look, they're playing for the Big 12 Championship on Saturday in Dallas. So uh, already things going 
pretty well there. So one more question for you. With Luke Fickle at Cincinnati, I know, I know, I know. It's Ohio State, Penn State, Notre Dame. Everybody in the industry seems to think, and maybe Michigan State, right? Like, seems to think those are like the jobs that he would seriously consider. That's not me reporting that. It's just when you, you've heard the same talk, I'm sure, from some of the reporters out there. It's like, these are the ones he would consider. James Franklin just got damn near 100 million guaranteed. Mel Tucker got the same. If we don't think Brian Kelly's going anywhere, and I don't, I don't really think Ryan Day is going anywhere unless he's going to bounce the NFL, which I, I kind of doubt. Do you look around and say, like, hey, what bigger job can I possibly get than LSU? See, this is I, I really like the way this is going because you are presenting it and I am agreeing with your take, but I I'm like I'm telling you that LSU should want fickle. I think that yeah. fickle's in the point of leverage here. Like I, I think that but LSU there's a there's a, a problem with the top end pay scale in the sport. And the problem is that because it would look even more outrageous than it already is. The very, very best schools are not compensating their coaches enough to overcome some of the uncertainty issues you have in hiring. It's why you know Liberty paying Hugh Freeze almost $5 million. In the past, the top school, if they wanted Hugh Freeze, they would triple that up, right? Now, a lot more of these schools have enough TV money to where they can pay a pretty competitive salary. Like we, we, we saw Iowa State pay Matt Campbell. We, we, we saw Baylor come up and pay Matt Rule. There, this is kind of a, a thing where the money that these huge schools have as far as actual salary is not quite the leverage that it used to be because it's not it's not multiples anymore. It's a substantial race. And a lot of the assistant coaching pool and the analyst pool and all of your, your back-end recruiting assistants and whatnot, that matters a whole lot too. Uh, but I think that the, the gap in pay is a little bit closer. Like, could LSU... Could they quad or triple up for Fickle? I don't think so, right? And in the past, there was really no 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 doubt. Of right. course, you're going to leave a G5 for, for an LSU. Yeah, LSU, I think LSU getting Fickle would be awesome for LSU. If yeah. I am Scott Woodward, I am begging for the opportunity to be taken seriously the same way that, as you mentioned, everyone believes that he looks at Ohio State, Notre Dame, Penn State. I, I think that that is a... That's a place where we're looking at LSU, one of what I believe is one of the five best jobs in all of college football. It has gotten to the point where LSU is ringing up Cincinnati's coach and asking, what will it take? And that doesn't seem like the ideal spot if you're the Tigers. I agree. Um, we will see what Scott Woodward was able to do. Oh, I don't know. Uh, do we want to go instant reaction on this one? What happened? Okay. So... Uh, let me pull it up because if, if we, if this is going to start moving quickly, oh, Lincoln, we, we might as well talk about this. Uh, so Do we want to cancel this and, and get, and get another siren feed going. <laughs> no, so we can crank out another video. And so that uh, Coca can get this in, into the feed, the, uh, LSU, you know, talk. Let's, let's go ahead and, and get an initial thoughts and then we can, we can figure out. So according to, uh, Pete Thamel, Sources, USC is targeting Lincoln Riley as the school's next coach. Now, this was reported two minutes ago, and if you're being targeted, that's that's one thing. Lincoln Riley still would have the opportunity or the option to be able to have the classic. It can, Bud, correct me if, if you think this is going to play out differently. We're not there yet. We're still to a point where Oklahoma could then announce a new deal for Lincoln Riley, and then it's like, oh, Lincoln Riley's staying, and USC says we never offered the job to anybody else, but it wasn't officially offered, but we still get a sense the way that it played out where USC targeted Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley looked at it. They talked, ultimately decided to stay with his current job. That is still an outcome that could happen. This could also move very, very quickly, and we could have USC introducing Lincoln Riley as the school's next head coach, especially since the Sooners aren't in the Big 12 championship game. That man is available right now. What do you think about this? I mean, I, I think it would be a, a really, really good hire. Uh, what, what's the narrative out there? All of these top West Coast quarterbacks leaving the West Coast. Who better to keep those guys home than the dude who's produced Heisman Trophy winners in a bunch of the most recent seasons. Um, that would be quite the coup for Mike Bone at USC. And 
if you believe LSU was after was after Riley pretty hard, and I do, uh, it's going to make you say, "Hmm, USC just beat out LSU." Yeah. For the coach. Wow, that is that is the flip of how I ranked those jobs when they first came open. Yeah. Why yeah, do you think I, that is? I don't know. Um, if if they get Lincoln Riley, that tells me that they are going to be really pretty damn competitive, right? Like at LSU is going to be quote unquote all in, you know, there's a lot less competition out West, man. Arizona state is apparently keeping Herm Edwards. Arizona state has five commitments, right? Mm-hmm. Every year they keep him, they're going to fall further and further behind. Oregon's your big competition. I don't think if, like, like USC at max capacity, they're not scared of UCLA nor should they be based on history and, and resources and whatnot. I don't know. I think this is happening, by the way. Expect announcement in the next 24 hours, according to yeah. them, the final details being worked out. Holy cow, bud. We got Lincoln. Live on air, man. Like Lincoln Riley going to USC, reportedly being targeted, final details being worked out, you know, sprinkle all the alleged leads and all the reported leads on there. No job is ever offered until it's offered. But goodness gracious, what an incredible loss for Oklahoma. What an incredible win for USC. And while I just said in this very emergency podcast that uh, there, everyone's an idiot when you have a coaching hire, if there's a coaching hire grade that I would feel confident in, USC hiring Lincoln Riley away from Oklahoma would be about as close to a confident A as I could imagine. I, I would agree. Um, pretty proven winner. He's taking his team to the playoffs. Uh, really good recruiter. No doubt about it. That's that's a pretty pretty nice hire for them if, if, if this actually comes to fruition. Uh, by the way, Feldman last night would not be surprised if USC took a big swing to try and pry Lincoln Riley away from OU now. Like this must have been swirling very late last night that this could happen because Oklahoma people were worried about this. Uh, People were nervous. Uh, Yeah, yeah, but not about USC. Mm -hmm. At least not the ones that, that I knew. Yeah. Yeah. So they were feeding off the same stuff. Any, all right. So let's, let's start to spin this ahead. First of all, uh, Lincoln, at USC, you mentioned that Oregon is the you know the big competition right now, and if you're Lincoln Riley, you've got more college football playoff appearances than uh, Mario Cristobal does. You step in and you immediately have a, a longer track record in terms of big time Power Five success. So, is it realistic? The Trojans have a roster that had, I believe, one really bad recruiting cycle. And then the rest wasn't like up in that top five range, but not awful over the last couple of years. I believe it is a talented roster. I, I am willing to, to overreact and say that Lincoln Riley, based on the talent that is there now, what he might be able to do in the uh, transfer portal should have USC competing for PAC 12 championships right away. I, I, I don't think so. Um, I don't think USC's talent development has been very good there recently under Clay Hilton. They're not a very physical football team. That's not something you're, you're going to be able to fix overnight. Uh, and I would hope that USC would have some patience, obviously, uh, as basically anybody should with the new coaching hire to let Lincoln get his people in there, get them hired and start recruiting and start building up that roster. Transfer portal could be pretty nice. Lincoln has shown a willingness to use the transfer portal there. When he was in, Nor- I guess he still is in Norman as of the time of this uh, th- this chatter. Uh, but no, I I don't think they're going to be competing for national championships in the first year or two. Uh, Jackson Dart is a pretty nice piece to have at quarterback. Uh, Lincoln can go get not any quarterback he wants, but there, there's a whole lot of guys who would enjoy playing quarterback for him there. Uh, you know, this is it seems like a I don't want to use the word slam dunk, but this is absolutely a hire that if they get this done would exceed the expectations that I had for them based on recent weeks. And for the record, my claim about Lincoln Riley having USC competing for Pac-12 championships is also an acknowledgement of the low bar that sure. is being able to back your way into back Pac-12 championship competition. Clay Helton did it, right? And Clay Helton is on his way out. So I would hope that Lincoln Riley in that Pac-12 South landscape where you can win the division with a conference loss or two, um, should should be able to get the Trojans. They the they're looking at taking the nine game conference schedule, dropping it to eight games. I think that's a, probably a pretty good idea. But like 
a Lincoln Riley led USC team should go six and two in Pac 12 play. Whether that wins the division or not, you know, we'll see what's going on elsewhere. But that kind of it feels like that's the floor. He's too, there's, there's been too much instant impact, even when he showed up as an offensive coordinator in Norman and what he did for those final years with Stoops. Uh, as soon as he took over as the head coach, we've saw nothing until this year but Big 12 championship success. Oh, man. And deal done, according to the Los Angeles Times. All right. Let's so go. Let's go. Lincoln Riley just informed his, this is according to Matt Zenitz, uh, Lincoln Riley just informed his staff at Oklahoma is taking the head coaching job at USC. Well. Okay, so uh, let's, 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 let's keep this going as we uh, sit here with you on YouTube.com slash Cover 3. Thanks for all of you that are hanging out. As we started with a Billy Napier instant reaction pod, it has now turned into a Lincoln Riley to USC instant reaction pod. The other piece of it in Norman is uh, what do you do to replace Lincoln Riley? And immediately there's a head coach at Tennessee who's done really, really good with his first opportunity as a power five head coach. Yeah. I, I don't think that they should like lose Heupel. Josh Heupel. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, mm, I think, I think Oklahoma can do better than Josh Heupel personally. Um, or Matt Campbell. Yeah. Sure. Yes. That would, that would be awesome. I mean, yeah. That would be a very assuming think, he wants to recruit in that style at that level, right? Like, there's a different way of recruiting at the very highest level, and you got to be all in on it, you got to be willing to do it, and you have to understand what it entails. So, it's not something that, that Iowa State does, right? But that'd be absolutely a call I, I would make. The uh, do you think that there'll be a narrative coming out of this that uh, he's running away from the SEC? Sure, yeah. Um, is it unfair? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe there's something to it though. You know, I, I, USC though, if you get that program right, and I assume Lincoln Riley is going to get pretty big investment from USC if this, you know, officially happens, which I, at this point, I assume that it is, you know, they're going to invest a whole lot of money with all due respect to Oregon. If USC is right, Oregon can't touch them. It's right. not it's not one A one B. Correct. It's, it's a clear one two, in my mind. Um, and I like it when uh, Oregon's taken off. USC is uh, closing out its run. It was fun because it was the alpha down south, and it was the um, underdog up north. I thought I I kind of like that for Pac-12 football, and I think having the strength uh, in both of those divisions and having them uh, with those two stylistic differences, you know, the traditional power with the national championships, uh, you know, the program that has really found itself uh, in a launching pad here in more recent years. Like I I think that that makes Pac-12 football way more exciting. That makes selling Pac-12 football to an East Coast and a Southern and a Midwestern audience so much easier when we're able to put together these rivalries. And even though you're right, it's not a 1A, 1B, it's a 1-2, but having both those programs hot at the same time makes it as marketable, as interesting as it possibly could be. 100%. I, I, Chip, I, I think you absolutely nailed that. Um, if not if not Matt Campbell for, uh, for Oklahoma, who? Lane Kiffin? <laughs> Watch me say Lane Kiffin for any job that pops up. I mean, if LSU and UF wouldn't touch him. We don't know that LSU wouldn't touch him. That's fair. And you you don't go get Mark Stoops, do you? That doesn't feel right. He's done a good job at Kentucky. Um, the narrative will be that he knows the SEC. He's a proven winner. That, that type of thing. It could be a landing spot for uh, your guy, Bill O'Brien. If Alabama rehomes Bill O'Brien to Oklahoma, it's disrespectful oh to Oklahoma. Yeah. If, if he could, maybe he could do a good job there, right? He did a nice job at Penn State. He had some success with the Texans in the NFL, and then obviously a lot of non success there for quite a while, uh, despite having a re really good QB. I don't know. What about Luke Fickle? I think that if Oklahoma can get Luke Fickle to come be the head coach, then 
Like that's that that's a story that has uh you know that has Oklahoma being successful in the future in the immediate future, I think. I would agree. I, I think he would do a really good job there. You know, what one of the issues with Oklahoma now. I mean, does Mike Elko be, get that job? Do you go Oklahoma? defense? Yeah. You could potentially, I guess. Uh, one of the issues with, with OU is that you are going to play teams that are better along the lines of scrimmage on a more regular basis now. And there are not a ton of those elite level players like that in Oklahoma. This is what we talked about with um, oh, our friend on CBS HQ, uh, the, 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 the huge Oklahoma fan on, on Twitter. And Andy when, when we talk- yes. When, when, when Amanda was like, why, why would you leave LSU or Oklahoma for LSU? And my thought was, is it easier to get a quarterback to follow you to, to LSU because of, of your reputation as a quarterback guru, or is it easier to get big old dudes from Louisiana to follow you to Norman? And I think the answer is obvious. I, I think quarterback recruiting travels more. Now, Oklahoma, we'll see. We, we will see on this. Sorry, a lot of people tweet at me. Uh, LSU is still a better opening than, than Oklahoma, right? In the SEC. LSU is still yes, LSU is yeah. still a better opening than Oklahoma. Unless Oklahoma's there's something about the LSU job that we don't know about. I think that as I'm trying to entertain where Oklahoma goes, I, I'm willing to take uh steps down into like the the coordinator uh role that I probably wasn't doing, especially with the Scott Woodward um especially with the Scott Woodward home run hire uh, type stuff. Tom Fernelli joining this emergency podcast. Let's go. Just hanging out all day. Double, double emergency <laughs> podcast as uh, very quickly. We started with Billy Napier to Florida and doggone it. Actually, you know what? Thank you for the timing because this is, this is nice to knock it out. Um, Lincoln Riley to USC. Tom, obviously, you were you saw the news and were moved by it enough to come hop in the stream yard. So, uh, what's up? What's, what's the take? I mean, no, no offense to Billy Napier, but you know, I've got family over here today, and when the Napier news hit, I was like, all right, I don't, I don't need to be there. But then when the Lincoln Riley thing started to hit, I was like, all right, I need to get downstairs. I need to get on the show because this is kind of a big deal. So he didn't lie. He is not the next coach at LSU, and my biggest to- takeaway from this is that. All the reporters who were reporting that LSU was a done deal were wrong. And all the Oklahoma reporters who this morning I saw dunking on those people on Twitter were wrong because Lincoln Riley was definitely very much in the market for a new job. Obviously, it seems that he chose USC over LSU. And uh, this is, I mean, but would you say so far of all the hires that we've seen, is this the quote unquote biggest home run to this point? I mean, Yes, to, to the extent you want to use the, the, the term home run, uh, I, I think it makes a lot of sense. He is like they did kind of steal Florida's thunder on this. Mm-hmm. Now, stealing the thunder does not guarantee success. Uh, but Tom, it it we we shifted pretty quickly from talking about Billy Napier to, to talking about Lincoln Riley, as as you just mentioned. The guy's a more proven winner, and I think the one really encouraging thing for LSU, or excuse me, not for LSU fans, definitely not for LSU fans. No. For USC fans is that there's no way Lincoln Riley takes this job unless USC is ready to be back in terms of financial commitment, spending, assistant pool, recruiting analyst pool, marketing, all that kind of stuff. And that's really key there because if you, in LA, right, you you can afford good coordinators. You can pay them a couple million. You can afford some good assistants. Can can you afford to pay your off field guys a buck twenty, so mm-hmm. they don't have to live an hour outside of campus? Right. What 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 about your graphics guys and all that? Can you get quality people in the secondary and sort of tertiary levels of your staff and pay them? And I don't think there's any way Lincoln Riley would have taken this job, assuming that he actually fully does. And I, I at this point, you know, who's reporting? I I, I would uh, I, I think would believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, this is uh, this is pretty big. This is a pretty big deal, and I, it, it suggests to me they're gonna they're gonna be on, on back on top of the of the Pac-12 as Chip asked relatively soon. Now, this roster I don't think is as good as it's sort of like listed recruiting r- recruited talent. I don't think they've done a really good job of developing it, and they still had that sort of crazy bad class from two three years ago that that, that is working its way 
through the system. But man, transfer destination USC could be pretty solid. You, you, you could you could band aid this thing a little bit. And does does Rattler or Caleb Williams follow him? Man, Caleb Williams to uh, to USC be pretty wild. Or does or do we take out a Jackson Dart Heisman future right now? <laughs> that's what we were talking about before before you tapped in like i i think that's that's a big thing here is jackson dart is pretty damn talented Mm -hmm. and another thing that's interesting to me about this too is that like like we're saying the home run hires we have no idea whether it's going to work but in a way this kind of reminds me it's different obviously because he's coming as the head coach this time but it kind of reminds me of where oklahoma was when lincoln riley came to take over the offense like it was a program that's supposed to be powerful that had kind of fallen on hard times wasn't really it was kind of lost in the muck of what it wanted to be and then lincoln riley came in bob stoops went back to the air raid roots that he had with leach when he first came to norman lincoln comes in brings that and immediately jump starts the program and that's kind of the same situation i see him coming to usc here although the difference is I don't know if USC right now has the same kind of foundation as a program as the Oklahoma one he inherited, where like there was a couple things needed to be fixed, but it's not like there were giant cracks in the foundation. I feel like USC's got cracks in the foundation. So I don't think that this is a guaranteed really quick turnaround, although I do like the odds of it happening. And I also think too, like just from the, we've talked about on the show too. And if, if you guys talked about this earlier and I, I've missed it, I'm sorry, but like all the top quarterbacks in this, in the country right now, are from California. None of them are staying in California. Lincoln Riley at USC, some of those QBs are finally going to stay home. 100%. 100%. So what, USC win in the national title next year? Or no? I think it'll take a couple of years. But, I mean, this is this is just, it's, it's such a big, it's also, like the rest of the Pac-12, I know they're probably like, damn, USC's going to be good again. But ultimately, that's a good thing for the rest of the league. Mm-hmm. Because it, the the Pac twelve is sort of a sort of a one team ceiling league, right? Where you know the Big Twelve what, what was kind of a two team ceiling league. If it wasn't Oklahoma or Texas, everybody's kind of, kind of looked down a little bit on that champ. As history says, they probably should. You know, the, the Big Ten is sort of a two and a half ish. You, you you could talk me into like a really good Penn State team. Clearly, Ohio State, Michigan. The ACC is basically a two. Maybe two and a half if Miami ever got their act together. The Pac-12 is basically a one to me, right? It's USC or skepticism. Mm-hmm. Unless you're really going to buy on, on on the crystal ball winning a national title there, and I'm, I don't know. I think I think crystal ball recruits at that level. I think there's some other changes they need to make though with their approach, like specifically offensively. I think they need to change things up a little bit if they're going to be national title contenders. But I do think that just overall, like you look at the big 12 as a conference and it has been a rough few months because obviously Oklahoma and Texas were going to leave anyway, but now Lincoln Riley's leaving Oklahoma. He's going to the PAC 12. So not only does the sec get even stronger by taking the big 12's two premier programs, but the PAC 12, the other power five conference that the big 12 is kind of in direct competition with as far as being a powerful conference just took Lincoln Riley. So the Pac-12 is getting stronger off of Oklahoma leaving the Big 12 too. And now, I because th- I, I think this is a, again, we don't know if it's going to work, but just from perception of what we know now, this is a huge hire for the Pac-12 because like you're saying, like USC needs to be good for the Pac-12 to be good. And this is a significant step toward USC being good again. 100%. Uh, we should probably wrap this here so Coca can start cutting this up and sending the video into CBS. They're already hitting me up. Say, hey, whenever we're going to have this video over there, uh, we got to get some articles. Really appreciate everybody jumping on today. Uh, Coca, if you're still producing on the back end because Chip jumped out, I don't uh, uh, I don't have the ability to end the stream. <laughs> we will talk a, a lot more uh, about recruiting coming up. Obviously, Oklahoma is in immediate need of a head coach as well. By the way, uh, Feldman official uh, Riley has accepted the uh, the USC job per multiple sources. So, um, shall we start the Mark Stoops to Oklahoma train right now? We said Stoops, uh, Fickle, and Campbell. Wow. Yeah. No, Oklahoma's going to get a good coach, but it's like I heard when I jumped on, you were mentioning is LSU a better job than Oklahoma? I I still think it is, but I still think Oklahoma going to the SEC is going to be able to pull in somebody big. For sure. 
Awesome. Uh, we will likely do another another uh, reaction here when Oklahoma makes its coach or if LSU decides to have a coaching hire in 2021. We'll also probably do a live reaction there on that one. Guys, uh, thumbs up the video. Make sure you tell everybody. I, I thought we were going to get like Miami today. And instead we get a USC hire, a Florida hire that feels like it was four hours ago. And now we're, we have an Oklahoma coaching search. This is pretty wild. Mm-hmm.